So you guys, we are live and we're about to start. So thank you guys for joining me. I truly do appreciate you guys. Okay, so people over here in Facebook land, people over here in Instagram land, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we're talking about the monthly time frames okay and the reason why we're going to be talking about the monthly time frames today is because you guys we're in a brand new month it is december you guys which means because we are now in the month of december that means that you should already have your trades planned out for the week or not even for the week but for the month y'all we're in month 12 which means 2021 is getting ready to happen for us okay and because 2021 is getting ready to happen December is the time when a lot of traders slow down in their trading it's the time when traders take a break or they start preparing for the brand new year but that doesn't mean that for the month of December that you just stop that's not what that means what's up Trace Nash you guys over here on Instagram land make sure y'all follow my guy Trace Nash y'all on Facebook land I'm glad that you guys are joining me so I am simultaneously broadcasting y'all we're gonna be over here for the next hour I'm gonna try to give you guys as much information as I can so you guys can practice this information on your own on your price charts okay so when it comes to observing um, the monthly time frame is talk about what you're actually doing on that monthly time frame. Number one, the monthly time frame besides the yearly is the highest time frame that you have that you can observe, right? So with that being said, you have to know that if you observe that time frame, you're there to basically hold trades, okay? The monthly time frame is that a time frame where you say, oh my gosh, I'm going to observe it and then go scalp the market. That's not what this time frame is for. You're looking to see how the month end it so you can know what you're going to do for the month ahead now who is this class for because y'all this isn't this is going to be an hour long class and yes there will be a replay i'm going to keep the replay up only for a limited amount of time the replay is for new traders who don't know where to start if you are a brand new trader one thing that you don't want to do is start at a very low time frame. The reason why you don't want to start too low is because it's too much noise. So if you start on the one minute time frame, the five minute time frame, the 15, 30, sometimes even the one, you're going to be lost in the south, right? And I don't want you guys lost. So we're going to start on a higher time frame. The monthly time frame or this class is also for people who want to analyze higher time frames so they can hold their trades longer. You guys, I'm not telling y'all that y'all going to be holding your trades for years or for months. But if you're on a monthly time frame, you may be holding your trades for a few days to a few weeks and you have to be OK with that. All right. Um, and then also to traders who want to identify their best moves at the beginning of the month to avoid confusion throughout the month. The one thing that you don't want to do when you start to trade is only trade for one trade setup. That's not what you want to do. The market is always moving. You want to stay ahead of the game. You want to stay a, a week or two ahead of the game, a month ahead of the game. And this class is going to teach you guys how to do that exact thing. Okay, so um, let's get into it. Kendall, there's no Zoom. We're on Instagram and Facebook for the night. Okay, um, there's no Zoom for this. All right, so... <clears throat> Uh, what I want you guys to do, especially my people on Instagram land and my people on Facebook, make sure you guys are sharing this live. So if you guys are on Instagram, share this out with two more people. If you guys are out here on Facebook, make sure you guys share this as well. And then also to my people on Instagram land, make sure you guys are following me as well at the Shaquan Lopez. I'll repeat it again at the Shaquan Lopez. Like I said, there is going to be a replay. So if you do miss it, you can go back and you can watch it again. Okay. Um, also to my people on Instagram, Lynn, after this, if you find value and you say, Shaquan, I want to be coached by you, make sure you guys book a 15 minute uh, discovery call with me. It's a free 15 minute discovery call. You can book it and we can hop on a call together. Okay. That's where I'm going to help you identify the best four price action candles that you can trade. I'm going to help you identify the best structures you can trade, how to set up your take profits, how to set up your stop losses. So you can take the second guessing out of your trading. Okay. So Instagram land, make sure y'all click the link in my bio to discover that 15, to set up that 15 minute call. Now, for those who don't know me, because some of you guys may be new to me, Instagram land, Facebook land, my name is Shaquan. Hello. Okay. I've been trading for going on five years. I've been teaching for going on three years. And I basically am a swing trader. 
And what I do is I teach new and struggling traders how to simplify the knowledge that they're taking in so that they're able to read the market in its simplicity. That's what I do. And I've been doing it for quite some time. And if you ask me what qualifies me, you guys, what you guys do here online, I actually did in banks. I was the person, I was the bank teller in Germany, the person who processed ATMs, who processed payments, who exchanged foreign currencies, who dealt with reconversion rates, who dealt with conversion rates, wire transfers, all those things I did that at banks. And now I teach it here on the price charts. So I take my banking knowledge and I help apply it to the market. Also, too, I did go to school, you guys. I was going to school to be an accountant. And as an accountant, you had to learn about economics. You guys, we trade economics every single day. And so I take that information and that knowledge as well and apply it to the price charts too. And I just believe that God gifted me to help people create organized rules so they can enter trades, set up their own techniques so they can become independent traders who can take trades on their own. Because guys, that's what you want to do. You want to become the independent trader. And I'm going to help push each and every last one of you to do just that. Now, you guys, grab your paper, grab your pencils, because the content is about to begin. You guys, we're about to begin the beast the monthly time frame. Okay, now, trading is a business. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard that line before. People say, well, Shaquan, how do we know how to, you know, operate trading as a business if we've never owned one? Number one, put yourself in the business person's shoes, okay? What does a business person do every single month? They have daily operations, yes, they work day by day. But at the end of the month, guess what they're doing? They're going over the numbers. They're going over how their employees perform. How did they perform? What did they do? And how can they improve for the next month ahead? That's what you guys are going to be doing. So in order for us to do that, we're actually looking at our price chart. So in order to observe the month's activity, to know what you're going to do, you guys are going to do these five things. I need you guys to write each of these five things down. Number one, whatever currency pair or pairs that you are trading, I want you to know how did the currency pair perform? What did the currency pair do basically? That's what I want you to know. So write that down. Number one, how did the currency pair perform? Number two, how did you perform when you traded the currency pair? That's what I want you to write down. What actions did you take? How did you perform? Number three, what actions will you take to improve for the new month? You guys, we're in a new month now. You need to start working on your improvements now. If you're brand new to trading, this will still apply to you, but you're in a learning process. So you need to be writing, I'm going to learn more. I'm going to do A, B, C, and D to learn this specific thing. Okay. Number four. I think I said number four. If I'm not on number four, I'm on number four now. Uh, what direction will you trade and how long can you potentially hold the trade for? That's going to be based on number one. So we'll say it again. For this month, what direction would you trade the currency pair for? And potentially how long can you potentially hold that trade for? Okay. And then number five, if it can be calculated, the key word is if, if it can be calculated, what is your projected monthly return at the end of the month? Okay. That's going to be based on your take profit. We'll talk about that towards the end of the class. All right. So those are the five things I want you to write down. How did the currency pair perform? How did you perform if you traded the currency pair for the month of November? What actions can you take to improve for December? What direction will you trade in and how long will you hold the trade for? And if it can be calculated, what is your projected monthly return by the end of December? Those are the five things I want you guys to write down. If you don't know any of those, it's okay. It's okay. That's what we're here for. That's why you're here to learn. Now, this is the second session, how to observe the monthly time frame. If you've never observed the monthly time frame before, it's fine. Let me give you guys a little bit of background about how the monthly time frame is, or the monthly time frame candle is actually formed. Number one, you have to know how it forms. Now, it takes 21 to 22 daily candle closures. When you look at your price charts and you guys are looking at the time frames, this is why time frames are very important. They're periods and times. 
It takes about 21 to 22 daily candle closures to form one monthly candle. That means you need a whole month of movement to see how that monthly candle form. Number two, it takes four weekly candles to create one monthly candle, okay? It takes four weeks of, can of trading, which is one month of trading to form one monthly candle, all right? You guys, with that being said, before you plan to analyze the monthly time frame, you want to observe the past four weeks of trading first. That is first thing first. Do not go to your monthly time frame for the new candle to see what the candle closed as until you have observed and analyzed how November has performed. Okay, do that for me. Now, here's what you're observing on that daily and weekly time frame. That's why I started off with this first. Number one, who had control for the previous month of November? Was it the buyers or was it the sellers? Who had that control? If the buyers had the control, you guys, that means that price moved in an uptrend. That means that price on whatever currency currency pair you're trading was making higher highs and higher lows. A really great example of this, you guys, is pound USD, AUD USD, Euro USD, and New Zealand dollar USD. Those four currency pairs, which are major currency pairs, all moved in an uptrend for the month of December, which means the buyers had control. And that also means that it basically created higher highs and higher lows on the price charts, okay? So it means the buyers were in control. You should have been buyers in the month of November. Now, if the sellers had control, that means that price moved in a downtrend, which means that the exchange rates were decreasing, which means lower lows and lower highs were made. USD CAD, USD Swiss, and USD JPY, which are also major currency pairs, moved in a downtrend. This means that you guys should have been the sellers for the month of November. Now, remember what I asked you guys earlier? How did the currency pair that you traded or that you analyzed perform? That is how you know what happened. That's how you answer number one. Number two, how did you perform? How many of you bought the major currency pairs, the euro, the New Zealand dollar, the AUD, USD, and pound? How many of you bought? If you bought, you write that down for number two. If you sold, such as uh, USD CAD, USD JPY, USD Swiss, you write that down. You're basically, you're checking off what did you do. If you did nothing, say I did nothing. I said on my hands. There's nothing wrong with that. I didn't trade all those pairs. I said on my hands on a few of those, but I'm okay with that. You see what I mean? So you have to know what you are okay with. All right. Now, um, at the same time, we're going to go over to number two. Based on the movement, okay, once you analyze the weekly, once you analyze the daily time frame, based on the movement, the monthly time frame should mimic the recent four weeks of movement in one candle. That's the monthly time frame. You guys, the monthly time frame closes month by month by month. When I look at my last four candles on the weekly, or my last 21 or 22 days, each of those time frames should tell me the same thing. Either price move bearish. If it did, that means I have a bearish monthly candle or price move bullish. If it did, I have a bullish monthly candle. So any of you who think that price move different on any time frame, that's not true. Price moves the same on every single time frame. It just depends on how you're looking at the chart. Your time frame shall always mimic one another. That's why you start and have, have you guys start from the daily, then the weekly, then the monthly, so you guys can observe that information, okay? So with that being said too, session number three for right now, here's how you can use the monthly time frame. You can use this in four different ways. I want you guys to write down these four ways, how to use the monthly time frame. Number one, you can use it to confirm if you should continue to hold the trade if you're currently in an open position. You guys, I am currently holding a sale on USD Swiss. It's a long-term sale. I've been in that sale for about a week or so. I'm going to keep holding it because the monthly time frame, if I look at November's candle, is still bearish. So I want to keep holding it because price is still bearish on the weekly and price is still bearish on the daily. So I have a trade that I'm holding. So I can use the monthly time frame to confirm that. Number two, you can use the monthly time frame to confirm where to enter your next trade 
based on the previous month's candle. Like I just said, for the month of November, it was bearish, right? For some currency pairs. If your pair is bearish and you see that price in a downtrend, continue to hold the trade, but use that previous candle to tell you what to do, where to enter your next trade. And we'll get into that along in this class as well. Number three, confirm if you should not enter the trade based on the placement of the monthly candle. You guys, if price is consolidating or it's ranging or if price closed as an indecisive candle or as one of my new clients, she put it today as an I don't know candle. If price closed as that, you guys, then that means that the monthly time frame is telling you guys not to enter the trade. There's nothing wrong with sitting on your hands and not entering. It just means at that moment, you don't have nothing to do. Just go to the next currency pair and see if it's telling you what to do. Okay. And then number four, you guys, um, confirm the monthly time frame can confirm the next exchange rate or price point the currency pair is likely to go. That can either be your take profit area or the next area that you're going to enter the trade. And once again, like I said, we're going to talk about that throughout the rest of this class. Okay, so hey V, what's going on, sweetheart? Um, so with that being said, you guys, when you're trading, you want to start to prepare your price charts for the month ahead, which means y'all gotta do some analysis now because that's what we trade for, that's what you learn to trade for. You learn to analyze price charts on your own. But some of you guys are scalpers and day traders, some of you guys here are swing traders. And remember, this class is primarily for people who want to hold trades longer. If you want to hold trades longer, that means you have to do the analysis before anybody else does. And you have to wait for price to get to a particular point. So here is some key tips, you guys, on how to prepare your trades for the month ahead. All right. Um, number one, you're going to already be ahead of the game because remember in the beginning, I asked you guys to analyze if price was moving in a downtrend or an uptrend, right? That means that you guys already know trend movement. That means you already know the direction that price is already going in. So you guys, the number one reason why this is important is because by observing the direction, you already know where price is favored to go. You've done the, you've done the work up front. All right. This is one of the things that traders have, have struggled with is the trend. Oh my gosh, your coin is price is in the uptrend. Is price is in the downtrend. I don't know. I can't tell. But if you start by analyzing your trend first, you already know the favorite direction your currency pair wants to travel in and you trade with it. That brings us to reason number two, why the trend is important to analyze first. You're going to know whether or not you will be the buyer or the seller going into December. If you guys tell me, Shaquan, I don't know what direction price is going in. You did not do the work up front. You didn't look at your daily. You didn't look at your weekly. You didn't see a price in an uptrend. You didn't see a price was in a downtrend. You just wanted to get into a trade. Do the work up front. If y'all notice, I've yet to say anything about market structure. I've yet to say anything about levels, support and resistance, trend lines. I ain't said nothing about that yet. Why? Because you have to know where price is going first. It's like you. I'm pretty sure you would not get in your car and drive unless you knew the direction that you wanted to go in first, right? That's the same thing we do here. We need direction and we need a final destination, okay? That is very important. Now, how to prepare your price charts for the month ahead. This is the next section. Number one, all you have to do is analyze if you have an entry soon, which can be now or in the near future. Let's start there first, okay? Just because you analyze a price chart right now does not mean you have a trade right now, okay? You guys need to know, hey, if I'm analyzing this price chart, this price, this pair has potential to be traded. Start to ask yourself, can I trade this today? Would this pair be giving me an entry this week? You wanna start by doing that first, okay? People here on Instagram land, you guys are seeing an actual representation of my price chart in the background. Like everything I'm teaching you guys about, those blue zones that you guys are seeing, that's from my weekly time frame. Those red zones that you guys are seeing, that's from my daily time frame. Those numbers that you guys are seeing, that's direction. It's showing you guys how I'm seeing that price going in a downtrend. I'm, I'm, I see my trend first. I know what direction I want to trade in right? 
the zone say this is where you want to enter and the price gets there you know you're going to have to hold for some time but when it gets there you have a potential entry that's what those are for you guys okay i know on facebook land you guys can't see that but just people over here on instagram land can okay now next thing next you guys um this is where you will be plotting your market structure okay so when you start to analyze will i have a trade soon or will i have a trade in the future this is you telling the market i'm almost ready to participate but in order for me to participate i need an area to trade to and fro this is your market structure okay and i want you guys to remember for some of you guys you may be new if you don't know what market structure is market structure is basically what you plot on your price chart that says at this price point or at this area, I want to enter a trade. I either want to push the buy button or I want to push the sell button. But you're placing that structure. The market's not putting it on there for you. Your price chart's not putting that on there for you. When you come to the price chart, you're coming to it with the naked chart. So you're the one who's drawing these things on your price chart. It's chart art. That's what I call it. It's chart art. Okay? Now, number two. You have to know what time frame you're going to be plotting these structures on, right? Now, for best practices for some of you, because we are talking about the monthly time frame, the weekly time frame, and the daily time frame, for best, for best practices, you can start plotting your structures wherever you guys are using. Some of you guys are using support and resistance. Some of you guys are using key levels such as supply and demand or quarter points or half points. Some of you guys are using... um what they call advanced patterns some of you guys are using trend lines for chart patterns whatever you guys are using what you want to do is you want to start to plot it on your monthly or your weekly time frame but you do also want to place it on your daily time frame we'll get into entries in just a few minutes so when it comes down once again to you plotting your structures for best practices you can plot them on the monthly and or the weekly but you also want to make sure you're really placing them on the daily time frame because that's the time frame that bridges the gap between the highest time frames and your lower time frames. Okay. Now, each time frame that you guys plot these zones on or your support and resistance on or whatever you're trading, they're going to have their own targets. Okay. So you need to know that whatever price that you're entering and on based throughout this information or the monthly time frame is going to have their own observations but you're plotting it on your price charts already so as price moves and it gets to these key points or your market structures you're already set up to take your next trade because remember we trade for the future we don't always trade for the here and now your price chart sets up for the future so by you doing this at the beginning of the month you're already setting yourself up for success Okay, don't start to analyze and plot things on your chart every single day. Don't keep changing them. Do not change them throughout the month. You guys, that's the one thing I see traders do. How many of you here, if you do this, give me the number one. How many of you guys, once price takes profit or if it hits your stop loss or as it moves, how many of you are always changing out your charts? You're adding something. You're tweaking, you're deleting the whole price chart, you're starting over. If you're doing that, give me the number one. That's one of the things that you do not want to do because I can almost guarantee you, you're almost always right when you're plotting what you plot on your price charts, right? AJ said, when he gave me the number one, right? You're almost always right when you plot things on your price charts. Don't move it because it doesn't look right. No, let the market tell you if it's right or if it's wrong. You don't be, how can I say it? You don't be the dictator of yourself being wrong. The market is going to tell you, okay? Now, understand this, you guys. Um, when it comes to you plotting your structures, you guys, don't enter the trade too unless price is at a structure. That's why I asked you guys earlier, if you know if you're gonna have a, a trade for now or the future, if price is near your structures, you're gonna have a trade. Like some of you guys may have had a trade today, but if price is nowhere near your market structures, that means that you don't have a trade right now, but you're setting it up for the future. So when price does get to it, you're gonna have a reason to want to place the trade. All right. So always remember that do not place a trade unless my price is at your structure. 
okay? Now we're gonna go into section number three here. This is your entries, okay? You guys, when it comes to your entries, have one or two time frames that you'll enter the trade on. What does that look like? I know for me and the beautiful traders who I teach, my clients, my students, and my private coaching group, you guys, we primarily use the daily and the four hour time frame to enter trades. Other than that, we don't really drop down any lower. But that's our bread and butter because once again, we're swing trading. We're holding our positions. But what does your entry look like to you? On what time frame does that look like to you? Is it the four hour for you? Is it the daily? Is it the one hour? Whatever it is, have one primary time frame and have a second one that you can say, hey, I may have missed it on this time frame, but maybe I can go to this time frame and catch it. One or two is all you need. You don't need five to 10 time frames to tell you what price is doing. Remember what I said earlier? Price doesn't do anything on any, it doesn't do anything different on any time frame. You just see more candles or less candles. That's what I mean. Okay. So don't have too many time frames. All right. Now, um, understand this, that the higher in time frames you go, the higher in time frames you analyze, the higher in time frames that you do enter, that does mean that you will be holding your trades longer. The lower in time frames you analyze, the lower in time frames that you guys are plotting your market structure, the shorter you guys are going to be holding your trades for. And that's why I asked you guys earlier. How long are you going to be holding your trades for? Or can you potentially hold your trades for? Do you guys see how this information is working in full circles now? Everything that I teach is going to come back full circle. It's going to make you answer your questions all over again, especially when you start implementing this information. And basically what it's about is if my structure is here and my next structure is here and I enter here and I exit here, how long in between those structures do I typically hold my trade for? We did a class on this a few weeks ago, too, if y'all remember that class, the market structure class, right? Where we talked about the difference in how long you're typically holding your trades for. And that also depends on your trading style as well. So that's something that you guys, you know, you want to start to think about, okay? And then start thinking about it like this. How long do you want to hold your trades for? Is it going to be a few days? Is it going to be a few weeks? Only you can answer that, but that's going to be displayed on your price charts as well, too. OK, and so for best practices, when it comes to your entries, because people sometimes ask, well, Shaquan, what's your rules for when you enter a trade? You guys, I'm very simple. OK, once price reaches my market structures, whatever I'm using, I allow price to tell me when it's time to enter. Y'all know if you haven't been here with me for a while, if you've been with me for a while, you know, I only look at four candles. Right. If one of those candles appears on my price charts, guess what? Shaquan going to enter. If one of those candles don't give me permission to enter, Shaquan is going to wait, right? Anyone who I teach is knows that because you have to let price give you the full setup, all right? And last thing, last, you guys, this is going to go back into time frames. When it comes to your entries and you entering a trade, do not time frame drift for any reason. Here's what I mean. If you analyze the monthly, weekly, daily, and let's just say that you enter the trades on the four hour or even the daily, Right. I just like to use the higher time frames because it's just easier to explain. If you know you enter on a certain time frame, but then you start going down to the 15 minute, to the five minute, to the 30 minute, to the one hour, to the one minute, you start to time frame drift. You're going to be lost. OK, you will be lost in the sauce. And that's the one thing we don't want to do. Do not time frame drill for whatever reason, because what's going to happen is it's going to throw you off of your path. It's going to make you think price is doing one thing, even though you're doing another. Even though you know price is going in a downtrend, it's going to make it seem like when you time frame drift, price may be going the opposite direction, the opposite way. Now you're making too many trading decisions. It's going to throw you off your game. Y'all, pay attention to what you are doing and what works for you. OK, now we're going to go into our last section here because I knew this class was not going to be long. OK, so this is the last section, which may be the most important section. It's your take profit, right? How do you find your take profit? You guys, this is based on your trade setup. Number one is your trend, right? Let's go back to the beginning. Number one is your trend. In the month of November, how did price move? Did it move in an uptrend? Did it move in a downtrend, right? Number two is your market structure. What structures are you using to say, this is where I want to participate. When the market gets here, I would either continue to be a seller. When the market gets here, I will either continue to be a buyer, right? 
Number three is your price action. That's what says you need to enter into the trade. Let price give you permission. When price got into your structure, did it give you an engulfing candle? What candle did it give you, right? That's what tells you when it's time to enter the trade. But then your take profit is next. Once you're in the trade, you got to know where to exit, all right? Now, this is how you know your trade set up based on those things. But it's also based on, like I said, the direction. The direction is why you push the buy or the sell button. If I'm the buyer, I'm hitting the buy button. If I'm the seller, I'm hitting the sell button. When I enter my trade, that's my market structure. When I enter my trade, I'm placing my stop loss and my take profit, okay? I call this the TMP process, you guys. The trend, market structure, price action process, okay? It basically teaches, or how I teach it is, this is how you analyze the price charts. This is how you know your stop loss. This is how you know your take profit. This is how you know where price is going. It's three simple rules. If you can keep these three simple rules in the back of your mind, anytime you enter into a trade, you really won't need any other rules to enter or exit a trade. Okay? You really won't need that. Now, to exit a trade, you guys, once again, you have to know how long you want to hold a trade for. How many of you here exit trades early? If you do, give me number one. I'll put a one because sometimes I do exit trades early. But how many of you have a habit of doing that? Right? Do you exit a trade because you're afraid to pull back? Do you exit a trade early because you're afraid you're going to get stopped out? Do you exit a trade early because you saw a candle that went against you and you didn't want to lose money? How many of you exit trades early because of those reasons? If you're exiting a trade early because of those reasons, number one, you guys, you don't trust your process just yet. You don't trust your analysis just yet. Or you don't trust the currency pair that you're trading or you don't trust yourself. Anytime you do one of those three things that I just mentioned, you guys go back to the drawing board. Don't live trade. Don't have money in a real account. At this point, you don't even want to demo trade. You want to back test. And if you don't back test, what back testing basically means is you don't have money involved at all. You're going back in the past market to analyze the past previous movements, what you've learned, what you're trading. You're testing your psychology. You're testing how you enter the market. You're testing how you exit the market. You're plotting your structures and your zones. And instead of you trading where price is currently, you're going to go a year back, right? You're going to go a year back. You're going to go two years back. And all you're going to do is work your way forward to, hey, if I was trading in this area, how would it look? If I was placing trades in this area, would I have won? Would I have lost? You're going to back test that information. Okay. You want to back test that information because if you don't and you're steady demo trading or you're live trading with that mindset, you're going to continue not to trust yourself. You're going to continue to make those bad, those bad psychological habits of let me exit the trade early so I don't lose. Let me exit the trade early because I don't trust the market or let me exit the trade early because I don't trust myself. You guys, this is your money at risk here. This is your actual money. You have to be confident and comfortable with growing it. Losses will happen. They can be minimized. But trust what you're doing. And remember to let the market tell you when you're wrong. Okay? So, um, once again, just know how long you want to hold the trade for. That's the first part. Each time frame that you guys analyze is going to have its own exit areas. And I'm going to give some examples in a second. But... I know most of you are not going to hold a trade based on a monthly time frame because if you plotted a lot of your structures on the monthly time frames, you guys are going to have some huge gaps in between, right? Those gaps are going to be really big. And for some of you, you don't want really big distances when you trade. So that's why I said that you can plot your structures on the monthly and or the weekly, but you definitely do want to plot your structures on the daily time frame, okay? So here's how this looks. Um... On the weekly and the daily time frame separately, you're going to place these separately, okay? Whatever structures you're using, like I said, some of you guys are using support and resistance. Some of you guys are using trend lines. Whatever it is that you're using, start with one time frame at a time to mark these structures, right? Monthly and or daily. And when you're doing that, I'm just going to use support and resistance because it's easier. When you're doing that, number one, you do want to know the direction first. Write the direction down first. When you write the direction down first, it just makes it easier to trade with, okay? Then mark your structures, mark your levels, whatever it is that you're using. And then have, have um, the understanding of, okay, when price gets here, I'm going to enter here. 
I'm going to exit here. So for example, if you plot your support and resistance on a weekly time frame, and price is at your resistance area, well, when you enter your resistance area, you're going to want to exit at your support area, right? But what time frame will you enter that information on? Is it going to be the daily? Is it going to be the four hour time frame? You want to make sure that you have knowledge of that information, right? So if you enter your resistance, your weekly resistance on the daily time frame or the four hour time frame, you're going to want to exit that weekly support on the weekly um, on, on the weekly re, uh, support area, whatever time frame that is. Okay, it's not really a time frame when it comes to exiting your trades. So you don't exit a, a trade based on the time frame. You exit based on your market structure. Whenever price gets there. OK, so that's going to have its own take profit area, whatever that level is. Then what you're going to do is you're going to say, hey, OK, well, I marked up my weekly. Let me go to my daily. Whatever your daily uh, market structures that you're plotting, you're going to plot those. Once again, I'm going to use the daily time frame. Once again, support and resistance. If you're plotting resistance and support and if prices add a daily resistance, whatever time frame you enter that on, it could, most of you guys may be the four hour, the one hour or the daily like me. Then whatever time frame you enter the trade on, you're going to enter it at that resistance area and you're just going to exit at the support. Once again, the time frame doesn't matter at that time. It's just to take profit that's going to matter at that time. OK, however long you hold the trade for, it's going to be based on the difference between the market structures. Right. That's what it's going to be based on. But do you see how I'm saying enter at weekly, exit at weekly, enter on daily, exit at daily. But that should already be established in December now, December 1st, before you even begin taking trades. Know what it is you're doing. Know where it is that price is going. Establish now if you're the buyer or the seller. Establish that now. You know how the monthly closed. You know how the daily and weekly time frames went. You know if you're the buyer or the seller, you know what you want to do, right? That's what it is that you're doing. And like I said, all of you may not trade support and resistance. I don't trade support and resistance. I just use it as an example. It's just the easiest example to use. Okay. And you guys remember this, like when you're taking profit, you guys, that's going to adjust based on time frames that you draw your structures on. Okay. Once again, your take profits, it's not about the time frame. It's about the time frame when you enter, but it's not about the time frame when you exit. It's just about where you're comfortable with exiting the trade and how long you're going to hold the trade for. But you guys, your take profit is equal to a final destination. See the destination through. Once again, you guys, build and have confidence to hold the trade to it. If you don't have the confidence to hold a trade, maybe for a day or for a few days or for a few weeks, you need to adjust. But if you want to be that person who's holding the trades, if you want to be the person who's holding trades for days and weeks at a time, just understand that you're going to have some bigger structures in between. But you guys, biggest tip that I can give y'all is to know if you're the buyer or if you're the seller earlier. Because y'all, the goal is to have your price chart set up a month in advance. So as price is moving, you move with it. You don't always have to keep looking to the left. You don't always have to wonder about what so-and-so is trading. What market structure are they trading? What currency pairs are they trading? Because you are the boss. Remember what I said earlier, you guys, trading is a business. And as a business, you have to make your own trading decision. No one can make it for you. This is y'all's money. You are learning how to grow. You're learning how to grow your own money. Don't put your money in someone else's hand. Don't have so-and-so tell you what to do. Because if so-and-so left, if so-and-so stopped trading, if so-and-so went to another company, you're left on your own. So you need to know how to read these price charts for yourself, okay? So you guys, this is our stopping point for the night. We've been on here for about 40 minutes. And um, I'm going to leave this open now for next 10 minutes for Q&A. But I challenge you guys today. I'm going to give you guys a challenge right now. I challenge you guys to... Analyze your price charts today. If you haven't done it, we're in the beginning of the month. Analyze what I just said. Look to see what November did. What did November do? How did November move? Did you perform well? Did you not perform at all? What can you do to improve for this last month of trading for the year? And how can you go into 2021 ready to trade, ready to stay a month ahead, ready to kick behind on these charts? I challenge you guys today to do that. 
I challenge you guys to take control of your own money. I challenge you guys to be the grower of your own money. Prosperity lies within you. I want you guys to manifest that in yourselves today. Seriously, take control and take action. Now, some of you guys say, Shaquan, I don't have my starting point. I don't know how to do this on my own just yet. You guys, that's okay. Book a free 15-minute call with me. We'll talk about it. We'll strategize about it. If you have an issue, we'll talk about it. Let's see how we can work together, right? Let's see how we can work together. People over here on Instagram land, link in my bio, 15-minute discovery call. People here on Instagram land, just inbox me. I'm sorry, not Instagram land, on Facebook land, just inbox me. Okay, but make sure you guys are following me on Instagram at SLFX. Now, nah, that's my YouTube <laughs> at the Shaquan Lopez at the Shaquan Lopez. And then make sure you guys are also on my YouTube channel because every single week I come out with new content. You guys SLFX trading SLFX trading. Okay, so I'm going to leave the floor open for questions for the next 10 to 15 minutes. So let's go. Who has questions? Instagram land, Facebook land. What's y'all guys questions? Oh, that's okay, Kevin. If you're working a night shift, trust me, I truly get it, sweetie. No pressure. That's why I'm going to leave the recording up too, because I'm understanding that people are in times, different time zones, and I can't be everywhere at one time, you know? Um, Miss Monster asks, do I have a Facebook group for the students? Yes. Um, I only, I, I help a Facebook group. It's for it. She was a um, I just go in there and I, you know, post and do class over here for the group. Um, but I do have a private Facebook group. It's a paid group, the Swing Trading Society. Um, that's where I do most of my teachings. As a matter of fact, this slide and the outline for this class is going to go in there as well, too. So that's where I do most of my teaching there. So what questions do you guys have? Instagram land and Facebook land. What are y'all's questions? Because y'all know I feel like if y'all don't say nothing, your girl is going to be good to go. What questions do y'all have? And thank you guys for everybody who joined as well too. This month, I'm not going to be doing as much teaching on Instagram. I am going to be putting stuff up on YouTube. But I really want to get my clients. I have a lot of clients that just came in who I've onboarded, one-on-one -on -one clients. And also to my students in the Screen Trading Society, I am getting ready to teach them the TMP process live. So right now my goal is to get them more prepared for trading for 2021. We got a lot to cover. We have a lot to go over. And I just really want to make sure that they are prepared. Um, Shani asks, what trading platforms do I use? I use TradingView to analyze my price charts. And then my broker is Owanda. But I am maybe going to switch to another broker because I want to be able to hedge so I'm looking at two potential brokers right now. I haven't decided which one that is going to be. Um, but for now, I'm okay with Orlando. It's not a bad um, platform, but I do want to be able to trade across different fund, uh, different financial instruments. And I do want to be able to hedge the market. I love hedging. So yeah, that's going to be um, using different broker. But the reason why I like TradingView, for one, it's easy to customize. I love customizing it. I'm not a big fan of MT4. Um, because MT4 is not a broker, it's an extended platform of your broker. Um, basically, they allow you to place trades. But to me, MT4 is not easy to customize. Another reason why I like um, trading with as well is because I also invest in the stock market. So I'm able to see earnings reports. I'm able to see dividends. I can look at the stock market, ETFs, cryptocurrency. I can look at everything in one platform without having to look up different websites. And also, too, TradingView allows me to trade uh, my broker through them. So it's like a one-stop shop. So that's why I do it. Um, Erica asks, what lot size do you prefer? I don't trade based on a lot size. I trade based on my capital. Um, and that's one thing that I teach my people how to do every single week. We don't touch lot sizes. Um, the reason why we don't touch lot sizes is because you have to know what makes up a lot size. Your lot size is dictated by your trading capital. Your lot size is also dictated by your stop loss, and it's also dictated by how much you risk in the market. So I'll give you a really good example. If I have a $1,000 account, but I only want to risk 3%, that means I'm risking $30 in my first trade. Based on my stop loss, let's say my stop loss is 30 pips. So if my stop loss is 30 pips and I'm risking $30, 
then that means that my uh, lot size is going to be a dollar per pill. So how many ever pills I make for my take profit, let's say 60, then I make $60, right? But once again, I didn't choose the lot size, my capital, my risk tolerance, and my stop loss chose it for me. So I'm not basing it based on what I want because I've learned that when you just say, hey, I prefer this lot size, you can either be over trading, which means you're over leveraging or you're under leveraging, which means either you're risking too much or you're risking too less. So I allow my capital to tell me what to use, but we have systems that calculate that for us when we use TradingView or Oanda. Some of your brokers do allow you to do this. We use unit sizes because unit sizes are based on your risk, not by what you choose. Um, that's just a long way of saying that I don't have a preferred lot size, but I like to explain it. So yeah, thank you for that question though, Erica. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Instagram land, y'all quiet. <laughs> Any other questions, y'all? Those are two good questions. Instagram land, y'all got questions for me? Oh, y'all. Take into account this information, please. Don't take this information lightly. Lightly. Don't take this information lightly, you guys. Go on your price charts. Just start looking at that monthly time frame. Sometimes what I like to do is I take the time frame out and focus on the price movement. Because once again, you guys, price does nothing different on any time frame. All you're doing is when you go from the monthly to the weekly to the daily, you're just seeing more candles. You're seeing fractions of the movement that's already panned out and moved, right? So don't take this information lightly. And you guys, if y'all have questions, ask your questions, you guys. That's why I'm here, okay? Um, I'll take two more questions if you guys have any. If y'all don't have any, you know I'd be good to go. So do we have any other questions? I'm here for y'all for the next few minutes. Any other questions, you guys? I'm coffee cold. Let's have a talk to Will. Hey, Marcia, what's going on? Yeah, buddy. What's up, man? Any other questions, y'all? Your girl going to be good to go. All right, y'all. So y'all know how I feel. If we don't have questions, that means we're good, y'all. Um, so yeah, so Swing Tree Society members, um, people here on Instagram, people here on Facebook, y'all, you late? Yeah, man, we started an hour ago. Where were you? We started an hour ago. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave this recording up for you guys for the next few days. Next week, I will be back here on Instagram. If y'all want me to cover a certain topic, just um, let me know. My Instagram is at the Shaquan Lopez. It's actually my name. I'll write it here for you, sweetie. We got another question in, you guys. <clears throat> um, I try to hold my trades for long, but I can be in profit the next day or session, session, the London session. Uh, do, 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 and then by the next session, I am losing. So, okay, that's why I asked that question, y'all. Um, when price pulls back on you, how um, are you are you exiting your trades? Right. That's why I asked that question. So your trades are um, when you're in profit. Let's talk about this really quick. Yeah, this is very important. It's a very important question. Let's talk about this really quick. When you're holding a trade and you're saying you want to hold it for a few days, you have to understand that price pulls back. Okay. Price is going to go forward. Price is going to go backwards. It's going to put you in profit. Put you out of profit. Put you in profit. Put you out of profit. But what's the most important is your destination. If you say, hey, I think I can get 100 pips out of the trade, but you're going to only hold it for 25, you got afraid of the pullback. You thought, man, I'm losing. You're not losing, sweetie. The market is just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you just have to endure that back and forth movement. That's all that's going on. So it's not based on a session. See, a lot of these coaches and teachers that have been thinking, oh, you have to trade this session. Or price has to do this in this session. Or price, you know, when it gets to this session, you have to be out of the trade by this session. That's not true. That's not true. And that's why I talked about the distance in between your structures. What's the distance in between your structures? Is it 10 pips? Is it 100 pips? Is it 500 pips? 
because that dictates the way the market is going to move back and forth in between those structures. It's not your session. It's not. I gave, an, I gave, I gave this analogy to my one-on-one -on -one clients and my students. If you go to work and you work a nine to five or me, I'm a business owner, right? When I'm doing my day-to-day -day operations or you're doing your day-to-day -day operations, by the end of the day, you're gone. The next day you come to work, do your, op do your operations change? More than likely, your operations do not change. They don't. But you go in every day and you do the same thing. Every single day, you do the same thing. So it's like you have a good day, you have a bad day. You have a good day, good day, good day, bad day. Bad day, good day, good day, good day. That's like the market. It's not based on a session. It's based on how you're trading. It's based on when you approach the market. And every day when you approach the market, every week when you approach the market, how long are you doing your work? How long are you doing your day by day by day? That's what it's based on. Okay? So if you want to hold the trades, you've got to endure the back and forth. 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 Okay? But let the market tell you if you're right or wrong. Not you. If you're still in the trade, you're not losing. Price can always go your direction. It can always go your direction. Okay? All right. That I, but, you know, a lot of traders who come into the market come in thinking that. You know, you guys are taught sessions. This is primarily one of the reasons why I don't teach sessions. Though. But this is me personally. This is one of the reasons why I don't teach trading sessions. Because that that there, that there can kind of have you messed up from time to time. Think about your entries more than a session. When is your best entry? At what time? Or times, right? When do your best entries come? Be present for your entries, not the session. Be available. Be available, right? Be available. For my people who live in the United States, um, really quick, if you got to wake up, if, if you got to wake up at uh, 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning and go to work, and you got kids, or maybe you don't, don't get up in London. We do not live in London. We don't live in the UK. Get your sleep. See? Get get your sleep. Okay? Um, Mr. Mo uh, Mrs. Mona, or whoever you is, trying to scam in the Facebook group. Uh, this is why I, I can delete you so easily. I tell y'all, scammers be on here, boy. Uh, talk to Will. Cover fundamentals. I can cover fundamentals. I can cover the fundamentals. You know what's funny, Will? I don't really trade fundamentals, but man, every day, you know, you know, I like to tell people that fundamentals are you. You're the fundamental. You trade you. You know, I definitely do a class over fundamentals this month. I do a class over fundamentals. All right, you guys, any other questions? I see something about pound JPY, but I don't know if you have a question on it, though. All right, I'll see you on Friday. I'll see you on Friday. What up, James? <laughs> Boss lady, we know you rock. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, you guys, but I'm about to get ready to go. Um, Thank y'all for rocking with me. I know for some of you guys, it's late. It's late for me. Y'all might go to bed early. I'm about to, well, naturally, I'm not. I'm about to finish up some work. Then I'm going to go to bed. Um, so you said if you live in the U.S., you should only trade. I did not say you should only trade the U.S. session. I said don't worry about sessions. I said don't worry about the London session. Don't If you if you don't have to get up for the London session, don't get up for the London session. It's your preference. You can if you want to. But what I'm telling my people in the United States is to get their sleep. Get your sleep. The markets will still be here. If you rock and you make money in the London session, yeah, get up in the London session. But if you are losing sleep and you're tired and the London session has not been profitable for you, don't get up for the London session is what I'm saying for people in the United States. But other than that, it's not about a session. It's just when you're available for your entry. Okay? That's what it is. Rob asked, thanks for, uh, said, thanks for the class. You're welcome. Possibly to have a class regarding stop losses? Of course. Oh, that'd be an easy class because I can sum that up here. Um, with your stop loss, you always want to test your stop losses. I know some people use the ATR. The ATR is very popular. 
What I tell people is based on where you enter the trade, based on where you enter the trade, have a number in mind, right? Um, for example, if I enter a trade on a slow moving currency pair, let's say Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and I'm on a daily time frame because that's where I enter the trade, I'm always asking myself, can I get away with a 20 pip stop loss? Meaning if I add 20 pips on top of my entry candle or below my entry candle to give myself wiggle room, will price hit my stop loss before it goes my way? If it doesn't hit my stop loss as often, I need to use 20 pips, right? That's I'm not saying trade uh, your stop loss should be 20 pips. I'm saying add 20 pips to that entry candle to give yourself wiggle room, okay? Um, if it keeps hitting that stop loss, I need to go higher, right? But I test different numbers to see what works for me. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's the really quick. And it's not in demo trading. Once again, you guys, back test. Once again, you guys, you need to back test test that information volatility i can sum that up here too will that's momentum in the market you have low volatility you have high volatility low volatility price tends to consolidate price tends to move in um, more narrow trending movements it doesn't really move a lot high volatility crazy momentum price goes in one direction boom right we're seeing that right now in new zealand dollar High momentum. It's just going up, 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 up. High momentum, right? USD Swiss, uh, we just seen it drop. Crazy high momentum. Boom, drops. Prayfully, she keeps going down. High momentum. Okay? Volatility, momentum. <laughs> yeah, see, you were right. I was awake and ended up losing. Right. Yeah. So it's, I'm telling you, look, listen, if you don't have to be up for it, don't be up, get your sleep. We need to be rested as traders. I only trade 15 minutes a day. I'm not sitting here in my price charts. I refuse. I used to do it. Bad anxiety, crazy depression. Not doing it. Um, what if it receive, exceeds your risk percentage? What do you mean, Rob? What if what exceeds your risk percentage? But see, that's based on your capital once again. Like, what is your risk percentage when you enter a trade? I got two more minutes, you guys. I'm going to answer this last question. What do you mean if it is C, it's your risk percentage? Like, if I have a $1,000, I'm going to just go back to that $1,000 analogy. If I have $1,000 and I risk $30, that's 3%, my trade or my stop loss should never risk, should never, it, it, your stop, regarding your stop loss, it's based on your capital. If, if I get stopped out on my first position at 3% at $1,000, I'm only losing 30%. I'm, I'm sorry, three, $30, 3%. It's not about um, my stop loss at that point. It's about how much I said I'm going to lose in that trade. My stop loss is what dictates my lot size or my unit size, but I have to have a number that tells me I'm okay with losing and my trade has to equal that amount or your trade has to equal that amount. You set those parameters. If you guys are using lot sizes and you're choosing your own lot size without knowing if it's matching your risk percentage, you're trading backwards. You are over leveraging at that point. And, I, and I've even had a class about this too. We did a whole class on take profits and stop losses. We did a whole class on risk management. If you're choosing your own Stop on your own lot size and you don't know what your risk percentage is. You are over leveraging more than likely. Okay. Your trade should never go above your risk percentage. You should never lose more than your risk percentage. You got to calculate your, your, your lot size. You got to calculate your unit sizes. Okay. Right. See, Marcia, exactly. But that's, and that's what happens, right, Marcia? Exactly, sweetie. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do some more classes. But Instagram, you guys are about to stop. Facebook Live, we're about to go to an hour. If y'all need anything, DM me. If y'all need a 15-minute consultation call with me, you guys, Instagram land, link in my bio. Facebook land, inbox me, okay? I'll keep the videos up for a few more hours so you guys can do the video again, okay? I love you guys. We'll be talking next week. I have another class. You're welcome. I always do. I do a class every single week, Rob. I got your back, buddy. So I'll talk to you guys later. I love you guys. You guys be blessed.